there's this one question I see all the time on Instagram. You might get a better sense for how weird this question is if we switch from photography to, say, painting. This is The Raft of Medusa by Theodore Jericho. I doubt upon seeing this, your first instinct is to wonder what brushes were used to paint it. What draws you into this painting is the complexity of the composition, the geometry of the double triangle composition, for example, the way the bodies are posed to echo the peaks and troughs of the waves surrounding the raft, and the hidden in plain sight narrative details that keep you curious, like this tiny speck of hope on the distant horizon. It's clear here that brushes and paints are just tools of the trade. They don't play any significant role in making this the masterpiece that it is. And photography gear fulfills the exact same role. Your camera, lenses, lights, they're all just tools. I think this innocent sounding question is a symptom of a much bigger problem that our infatuation with camera gear is holding us back from reaching our creative potential. When I first started trying to take artistic photos, my understanding of photography was that it was a, a representational art form and what I mean by that is that my photos were just reproductions of reality. I could enhance that photo for sure, I could make it more saturated or more dramatic, but ultimately it would still be a reproduction of reality. And because that's where my head was, it made total sense that what I needed to become better was the best reproducing device, aka the newest, most feature-packed camera. And I wanted every new camera and every new lens. I'd drool over the specs and then marvel at the beautiful images people with that camera and with that lens were creating. Then I'd link those two things together in my mind, the expensive, camera gear, and the great photos. That became a problem. You see, this question is the wrong question to be asking. It's the wrong way to think about photography. It's a frame of mind that sent me down a really unproductive path, one that led to gear envy, procrastination, and anxiety in that order, actually. The tools in photography are clearly more sophisticated than with painting. But photography tools can encroach on your creation process if you let them. Photography is always going to be a balance between creation and reproduction. That's what makes it unique. I used to think of photography as mostly reproduction, mostly the camera's job. My creative input was minimal. In fact, that's why I got into photography in the first place, because this balance between creativity and reproduction wasn't intimidating to a non-creative person, which is how I used to think of myself. But it turns out I was giving the camera way too much credit, and that was setting me up to fail as a photographer. Here's how my mind works. I was, and still am, a huge fan of the photographer Joey L. I remember a good few years back being inspired to go out and try and take photos like him. But as I was doing some research, I found out that Joey used a $2,000 f1.2 lens. Yay! I only had this cheap $200 plastic lens that opened up to something like f1.8. I remember getting all deflated and thinking, I bet that's why his photos look so good, right? Because he has this awesome lens and I don't. And it felt like there was just no point in trying to take photos like Joey until 
I had that lens, so I did nothing. And of course, doing nothing would stress me out as well because all this procrastinating, all this not creating was in tension with my identity as a photographer. Photographers take photos and I wasn't taking any photos. I was just waiting around until I could afford the perfect camera gear. Over the last 10 years though, I've worked really hard at changing my relationship with camera gear. I've downgraded its perceived importance in my creation process. And then I've replaced it with a curiosity about technique and process. Instead of wondering what camera was used to take an image, I started analyzing the image's composition to see if I could understand what was in the image that appealed to me. How had the artist managed to draw me in and get me interested in the first place? I'd look at how scenes were organized, how they were lit, how they were structured, and try and work out why the photographer had made those choices and what they were trying to say with those choices. Why did they choose this specific color grade? How did they create this specific mood? How are they composing images that create an emotional connection with a viewer, with me? Asking questions like this about technique and process did more for my photography than buying the latest camera, lens, drone, tripod, light, ever would have. I, I used to think I needed the best gear to take good photos, but shifting my mindset made me realize that I could be making photos, not just taking them. And that shift in perspective might not sound like much, but it's had a huge impact on my photography. Tech companies and the millions they spend on marketing work hard to keep us entranced by their products. It's in their interest to have us believe that we can't create without their latest products, but always wanting the next best thing is, is really stressful and stress is the enemy of creativity. That new camera you're coveting, it might focus at one one thousandth of a second faster. It might let you shoot in slightly lower light conditions and it might do all of that at 0.6% of a stop wider. But it won't make you a better photographer because after all, your camera is just a very fancy 